One love, respect, man, okay? Peace, Jamaica. Iron Man. One day, baby girl, I know you will see the light. Whoa, that all I really want to do is treat you right. What is the state of Caribbean tourism and what is on the agenda? We chat with Jamaica's Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Edwin Bartlett, up next on Carib Nation. Tourism is now the major income earner for most Caribbean countries, but what are the challenges to faster and more profitable growth? Joining me to talk about some of these challenges facing the Caribbean is Jamaica's Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Edmund Bartlett. Mr. Minister, welcome to Carib Nation. It's a great pleasure to have you join us, and um, welcome to Washington. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know that you're here for a conference at the World Bank with the United Nations World Tourism Organization. Uh, talking about uh, tourism and inclusion. Uh, tourism Knowledge Exchange, I think, is the title. Uh, tell us a little bit about what, what, what are you hoping to uh, share in terms of uh, knowledge exchange, tourism knowledge exchange. Well, I think it, the conference will be looking at what's trending in the industry overall, um, how tourism will be an agent for poverty alleviation and true job creation and inclusive growth um, to examine the role of tourism as a catalyst and an agent for transformation uh, both of the lives of people mm -hmm. as well as communities and economies and to discuss all of that in the frame of sustainability which for us is of course broader than uh, the traditional uh, description, which essentially is environmental. Mm. So we're looking at sustainability in terms of the economy, the economic development, uh, and social development. So um, one of the things that we have learned over the years is that we must include or bring along with us the all groups yes. so that they buy into the concept of what we're doing with tourism. How far do you think you have got with that and, and how much still is left to be done in terms of um, rural communities, women, um, gays and lesbians because they, they're a, a group with a great deal of disposable funds for traveling and um, tourism inclusive, it, the, the inclusiveness of tourism will stretch as far and wide as I'm sure you, you can let it. Uh, how have you set in place um, the structure for that level of, that type of inclusion? Okay, to step back an inch, to look at the evolution of tourism over time mm -hmm. and the traditional way in which tourism was viewed, mm -hmm. essentially as a, a leisure activity and uh, more the involvement of the rich and mm -hmm. the privileged um, who wanted to be served and pampered mm -hmm. and, um, and who wanted somehow to, to flaunt their riches around. Um, but tourism has morphed into a very powerful economic activity that is creating millions of jobs and providing uh, economic development for communities, for countries, and also creating a career path for individuals and also creating sectoral interests and, 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 and driving much of what we call uh, passion points. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So people are traveling to fulfill their passions. And, and in that context, there are varied groupings, demographics, uh, with, you know, psychographic uh, descriptions and, 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 and an understanding also of what it is that is going to impel me to travel. So we have had to study all of this and mm. to understand these various nuances uh, of the human family and then build products around it. it, is, it yeah. So the issue then of inclusiveness becomes not just one of identifying what these passion points are and responding to them, what the service needs are and responding to them, uh, what the special needs that may exist for different types Inside of groups. sectors and groups, mm -hmm. but also to determine how do we bring poverty under control? How do we assault poverty globally? And which are the countries that can benefit most from tourism? And how do we make it to happen? To help that. Yeah. And so we, we, we have seen, for example, that the service, the experience that tourism markets, which is really what it's about, mm -hmm. essentially is provided by people and in many instances the poor people mm, true the small and medium yeah. enterprises mm. of the world drive tourism in fact 80 percent of global tourism today is driven by small and really? medium entities They're that high but tourism has a heavy propensity for leakage from the economies so these small countries that have become the playground, if you will, of the rich, or beyond that become the, the place of experiential tourism, find that their capacity to absorb the demand that tourism brings is negligible. Hmm. So the wealth comes in from the visitors, mm -hmm. spend, and it goes back out by importing the inputs of To tourism. build the same tourism. Yeah. So we want to look at that. And this is one of the reasons that I'm here and part of the conference that we, we're doing. How, how do we reverse that? How do we enable a greater level of retention of, of tourism expenditure, mm -hmm. of that wealth, mm -hmm. in the host countries? And so that then uh, entails um, service training uh, and um, education so, so that you have these communities buying into the concept yes. and understanding how to uh, create their ownership of what, what it is you're trying to do. Indeed. Now, what does that take and where can you learn that from? With, is there a, a country, a group, a region from which you have lessons learned that you can implement some of that into the, the region? Well, the, the lessons are being learned daily, as it were, as more countries um, are transforming from their traditional form of economic activity to tourism. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, um, 78 countries of the world today have mm -hmm. GDP of in excess of 10% generated exclusively by tourism. Really? Wow. And in the Caribbean, where we are, uh, of the 28 of us, 16 of those countries have GDP in excess of 50% attributed directly to tourism. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing is that the, the need for us to to, to do more, mm -hmm. to train more, and to create more uh, economic uh, um, activities around tourism is, is becoming paramount because the, tourism has, in fact, become the center of activities okay. connecting various economic streams. Mm -hmm. Because let's get it right. 
Tourism by itself is not it's an not, yeah. entity. Yes, it has to be connected. Exactly. It's a series of moving parts right. that must converge seamlessly mm -hmm. to present a, a, the experience that we talk about, which people pay for. Right. Ten percent of global GDP is what tourism represents. Mm. Mm. 293 million jobs last year. Wow. And $7.6 trillion of expenditure overall in Duke and Albright. This is huge. Mm -hmm. Now larger than oil and, and manufacturing and petrochemicals and, 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 and finance. Easily the largest industry. So we must make this large industry generate wealth mm -hmm. for all and become an agent of, of good social order and social control to create peace. Yes. Now that's, and, yeah. and, to, and to speak a diplomacy that, 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 that brings people together and, 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 and dispel fears mm -hmm. and, and also remove prejudices. And, and hence the wider question you ask yeah, I was about just gonna how do you integrate yeah. all the groups and ensure that the, um, the LBGG have a place that mm -hmm. the... Um, the, the, the special need individual, the autistic, et cetera, right. et cetera, have a place. And also that indigenous people have a place. That they because don't the feel indigenous they've been left people, behind. Exactly. They, yeah. they have always felt left behind because they, they feel that, um, well, they are locked in a culture of silence. Mm -hmm. but, but, but tourism liberates that because it, it offers you an equal platform. To present, to present your side, yes, your, well, but, but your craft your, your, or whatever, your, your experience, yeah, because that's what we sell. Now, do you have any idea what portion of the world market the Caribbean has been able to garner so garner so far? Well, um, the numbers are telling a story because last year, uh, twenty-seven million visitors came into the Caribbean, 27, some say 29, somewhere mm -hmm. between 27 and 29 million. Uh, put that against 1.2 billion, we, we see we are perhaps somewhere in the region of 1%, 2% wow. there about. Um, then the earnings at 30 million, billion mm -hmm. in the Caribbean, again, puts us in that same kind of, of category. So what we're seeing is that for us in the Caribbean, Although we are the most tourism-dependent region on Earth, instanced by the percentage of the GDP mm -hmm. that tourism represents, and one in five jobs generated by tourism in the Caribbean, um, we are not significant in terms of the share mm -hmm. of global tourism. However, we have uniqueness because we are the number one warm weather destination in the world today. Yeah. And, um, and it's number one also for cruise. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, the, the, the very discussion that we start about the importance of the Caribbean um, to tourism globally, um, to also take us to how do we in the Caribbean make sure that we uh, transform our economic fortunes from this tourism. Mm -hmm. uh, because even though we spoke about, we spoke a while ago about the um, impact of, of, of tourism on the GDP, um, in the Caribbean we, we are still among the most heavily indebted mm. countries mm -hmm. in the world. So the, there's a, an issue here, you know, we right. need to discuss that. Right. Um, the unemployment is still very high, high. Yeah. and also we have a high incidence of crime and so on. So, you know, these are matters that need to be discussed to in the context of this powerful position that tourism holds. Yeah. Now, what's the role of tourism in dealing with those, in helping us to alleviate that poverty situation, to help us to, 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 to clear this heavy debt burden that is, um, is, is killing us, mm -hmm. and also to deal with the social order issues. So, we have to look at what is happening with retention of the, the dollar mm -hmm. in the region. Mm -hmm. um, and the studies are showing that 80% of the, 
of the, the dollar does leave the region. Mm. So we have to go and look at building now. Where are we spending the, this money and why? We have to build the absorbent capacity mm -hmm. within the Caribbean to keep the dollar there. Own the experience. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's, that's, that's the big challenge. So that's where the, the, the hard work have. comes in. And that's where the hard work comes in. And, and we, we, we're, we're getting there because, first of all, we're understanding it. Mm -hmm. And we're understanding that in order to do this, we must change what is called the production and consumption patterns. Of Most course. definitely, yeah. So, yes, the acquisition cost of the tourists is high. You know, it's, it's major infrastructure yeah. that has, right. to be, it has to be big yeah. hotels that have to be built. You good know, roads. Good roads, mm -hmm. um, you know, water system. Airplanes, <laughs> um, you know, yeah. um, airline sh ships, yes, and, services. and so on and so on, yeah. big services. But on the consumption side, that when the tourism, com the tourist comes to your destination, whose food do they eat? Yeah, and that has been a, Who, a whose point entertainment of for some time, do they it? enjoy, yeah. and so on and so forth. So that's what we have to build out, build out strongly. So we must now provide the local inputs exactly. And if we do that, then the dollar will stay with us because we of own course. that experience. Right. So our big thrust now, and, and not just to the Caribbean, but the rest of the world, because those statistics I gave about the 80% retention, mm -hmm. is global also. And, and we, we in Jamaica have looked at a formula, which I, I wanted to, to mention. We've developed five pillars of growth mm -hmm. um, to bring new products in to bring new markets, to go to new markets, um, the new emerging markets of mm -hmm. Southeast Asia, South America, right. Eastern Europe, and so on, um, to bring new investments in, as that is critical to mm -hmm. build the infrastructure, and to bring new partnerships to bear, not just new partnerships in terms of airlines and distribution uh, channels and so on, but in terms of geopolitical arrangements, um, collaborative programs mm -hmm. with countries, and particularly with countries within our region. Mm -hmm. And finally, to renew uh, the, the development of our capi human capital, strength, training, our, training, train, train, yeah. train, train our people. That is so vital. Right. Yeah. So, so those five pillars of growth now are underpinned by five networks. And these networks define the passion points, the areas that cover why people travel, and gastronomy, food. 88% of the world travel for food. Mm -hmm. And so create that food Precisely. experience that is across the, the length and breadth of your country, utilizing mm -hmm. the very... The uh, local products. Absolutely. Yeah. But this is something that I think has been a complaint for quite some time, quite some time. across the Caribbean, that why would become from the United States and look for hamburgers. Absolutely. Uh, when you have Aki and Selfish and you have things that are local that people want to learn about. That you can present in gourmet style and exactly. you can pre present in the, most, and, yeah. and in the most delectable way. Precisely. With an appeal to the palate that compares anywhere in the world. And we have it in Jamaica and in yeah. the Caribbean. Oh, yes, exactly. Right? So, so food, big item. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be investing in food preparation, and you have some of the great chefs now and, too. Exactly, yeah. trained chefs and so on. Right. The second one is shopping. Sixty-seven percent of world travel for shopping. And, and you and know, the Caribbean has some of the most gorgeous fabrics and and art. The the, the fabrics and the designs of clothes are, are pieces of art. We we have some of the most colorful, the most beautiful work in the Caribbean, and I I am always appalled the fact that there's not more of it. Okay. So, um, so, you, so you, 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 I get, understand. you get that one nicely, right? Yes. The, the third is music and entertainment mm -hmm. and sports and culture and, and heritage and art. All those creative elements right. that are so strong in the Caribbean. In that Caribbean, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, born out of this confluence of cultures and ethnicity that this Caribbean mosaic offers right. an opportunity for unending creativity. Sure. 
Yeah. And, and uniqueness, mm -hmm. as we can have fusions yes, of various kinds exactly, of cultures. Exactly, the fusions of cultures and, and, and heritages. Food and heritage and, that, and everything. Yeah. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> for us then, that provides a great opportunity for us to package uh, our cultural products and be able to present them in, 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 in very strong um, and reliable and at a high level um, mm -hmm. of quality. Yeah, so that people can enjoy the music and the art of Jamaica and the Caribbean every day of the week. Precisely. And not just when we have events a festival, a like a festival, festival of yeah. this or a festival exactly. of that. While in the, in the same context, you could end up having festivals, numerous festivals, mm -hmm. because that's also part of the process. And, um, and, and, and fourthly, health and wellness. Mm -hmm. I think that the, the Caribbean, and certainly Jamaica, is, is rich with biodiversity. And the nutraceutical values from our flora is course, endless. Yeah. Endless. And we have a great opportunity to, to, to get our deep rural people become involved in, exactly. in, in an economy. Those that, are the people with the knowledge. Green, and, yeah. That is green and sustainable. Exactly. But providing yeah. enormous value for, in economics. To, to them and their children and so mm -hmm. on. So, and then finally, knowledge. And that's part of the conference. Um, that, right, that the knowledge here. exchange, yes. Knowledge exchange. But this now is, is, is broad in that it's not just that you're providing um, offshore training and so on for, for, for visitors from abroad, but you're also providing opportunities for conferences and meetings mm -hmm. and conventions and exhibitions and think tank arrangements and also for um, resort uh, areas for, for writing and, and, and for, for, for just sheer relaxation yeah. of, of creative minds to give them a chance mm. to think, just you know, to explore, to innovate, and, and to develop it. new ideas and new processes even. One last point, we have a few minutes before we close off and I want to talk a little bit about what's coming up in November. Um, just a, a synopsis of that. But I also want to um, address the fact that we're seeing a, a rise in crime in the Caribbean. And I'm wondering how does the CTO and the individual tourist um, organizations across the Caribbean, how do they feel about this and, and what are the emergent, emerging, emergency uh, steps that they can take to stem the, the crime, for one thing, but to stave off the, the fear that it is likely to drive? All right, well, I think um, safety, security, and seamlessness are mm -hmm. the, the three great S's um, that occupy the Roman in tourism today, globally. Mm -hmm. And um, the Caribbean remains today the the, a, a zone of peace and perhaps the safest of the True. destination areas. Now it is, yes, probably the best place to be. So we begin on that, but we begin also with a recognition that we need to act quickly and fast and collectively mm -hmm. to stem what is a growing tendency in the region, as is in the world. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and the the, the, the problems of, of poverty have to be addressed. The problem of ignorance has to mm -hmm. be addressed. We have to educate, educate, right. educate. Um, building relationships among our, our, our people. Because much of the crime that happens is, is domestic and is relating with gangs or yeah. different groups who have difficulty Political with resolving yeah. you know, conflicts, mm -hmm. internal conflicts. Uh, and you know that th that crime has not spilled over into affecting the visitor because the, the, the visitors coming into the Caribbean are as safe as, 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 as in church, to use the phrase <laughs> that we're all familiar with. Um, the incidence of crime against visitors in the Caribbean is minimal. Mm -hmm. In fact, less than 1% of all the crimes committed are against any visitor. And when you even analyze what happens, to, to, you see varied um, uh, responses, including mm -hmm. crimes that follow them from their destination into the region. 
uh -huh. and, 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 and relating also yeah. to transatlantic activity right. and so on and right. so forth. So we, when you get down to it, the Caribbean is essentially so a safe destination. Mm -hmm. And we pride ourselves in that. But at the same time, we are working hard to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. And it is a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. To wrap up in the last 30 seconds or so, tell us a little bit about Jamaica is going to be hosting the, um, in November the um, Sustainable Tourism Conference. Give us a little bit about the focus of that and um, what you hope to achieve there. Well, this year, you know, has been declared by the UN as the International it, Year of, of uh, tourism, sustainable, sustainable Tourism for Development. And in the frame of that, a number of activities have been planned. Um, the UNWTO, which is the uh, UN arm dealing with tourism, mm -hmm. along with ourselves and the World Bank, have come together to put a conference uh, on job creation and inclusive growth. Uh, because we feel that at the center of sustainability is about jobs, it's yes. about inclusiveness. And, um, and that therefore, uh, the countries of the world that have now embraced tourism. And, um, and as I said before, 78 of, of whom have GDP value of 10% and more. more yeah. um, but who are among the poorest countries too. And when you look at the profile of those 78 countries, you will find them to be among the third world yes, and right. the poorest countries, yeah. which means um, the leakage of expenditure is higher among them. Mm. Therefore, we have to look at how do we change stop that? How that, do yeah. we stop that? Mm. And so this conference is going to focus a lot on um, bringing multilateral lending agencies, academics, um, NGOs, small and medium ent entities, put their ministers, yeah. ministers, policy makers, 157 policy makers, ministers from the countries that embrace tourism. Mm -hmm. And let us sit and, 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 and celebrate a bit on these issues and to develop something of a blueprint I see. that will guide the world and will help the UN in, in constructing in their, their, their new their millennium goals, goals yes. after 2030. Great point on which to end. Thank you so much. And this has been a very informative uh, chat with you, and I do appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on Carib Nation. Thank you very much. And, My pleasure. Um, you know, you're a piece of us <laughs> that is yes. telling the world about us. Exactly. And we like that very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's what we aim to do. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. My Thank pleasure. You. Well, I hope you now have a good grasp of the state of tourism in the Caribbean and some of the challenges we face. Thank you so much for watching us in Carib Nation. And until next time, remember, our motto here is one Caribbean, one people, one culture, one nation. Thanks again for watching us. Until next time, I'm Darius Dean.